My question is uh, to William. Uh, you mentioned about ICOs. What, in your opinion, would be the uh, success criteria? How, how would they become successful? I mean, if we were to choose one of them to invest, so just wanted to uh, know your view, viewpoint, that uh, what, what would be the success criteria for an ICO? Sure. Actually, I, I wrote uh, an article two, two months ago when I said the successful ICO has four characteristics. One of them is, being, is a startup characteristic. So uh, the second one that's very important is the business model. How does the business model tie in with the token itself? Now, most of them, if not all of them, are very early, in very early stages. So it's like any startup. When you invest in a startup, you go for the team, you look at who is behind the company, and then you have to have some sense of agreeing that you like the idea, that you believe there is a market for it. So that's all we can go by right now. Is it a good idea? Is there a good team behind it? The rest is all going to happen over time, so it's not going to be easy. But uh, again, you have to look at how does the token enable the business model. It's not just about raising money. It should be about enabling something new. And uh, the successful ones will be the ones that will use the token as a lever, as, as something that uh, we did not have before. And, and uh, it's about getting users at the end of the day. So I will be following their uh, launch, uh, how they get users, how they get supported. So at the end of the day, it becomes like any other startup, really. And you may be kind of lucky to be in the uh, UK for that, because in France there are two underway, uh, which are kind of non-authorized when you, uh, some question has been asked to IMF, the equivalent of CFA in, uh, in, uh, in UK, and no answer has been given to, uh, to, uh, to launch that. So. Uh, here again, FCA has done tremendous work. I, I spent an hour at the very beginning of the week of the uh, CEO of Tramonex, and Tramonex is the first one to be able to be authorized in the UK to generate uh, Bitcoin, uh, to generate altcoin or new uh, cryptocurrency based on the, uh, on the pound. So uh, that's very, uh, very neat. And he met uh, Banque de France uh, yesterday morning just to get more information on uh, the process to get that uh, allowed to do some any cash transfer all over the world and uh, all of that. Just, just amazing stuff. Tramonex is the name of the company, of this first company worldwide to do that. So uh, that's a question I, I already asked to, to Pierre, but I would be interested to have the answer of William and obviously Pierre as well. Um, I think you both had uh, experience with the emergence of internet, which is not the case of many of us here. Uh, what do you expect to, to come differently in the same way as such, uh, concerning large ICOs, concerning the development, the reaction of large firms, etc.? Um, as I mentioned to you, it's, it's uh, uh, our summit in, we are only at the, the, uh, the bad news is that we are, we, we've done only 1% of, uh, of, the, of the path. The good news is that we've got a world of opportunity with a 99% open. Uh, really, 92, 93, it was kind of uh, impossible to, 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 to think about you know, the, uh, the future and all of the application that we discover as a networks. There was some chat emerging in 1998, uh, even for, for, for mail and all of that. That was 1994. Just imagine Amazon. Amazon, it was a pretty poor track record for the for, for till 2004 and with the emergence of AWS which gave a kind of uh, uh, air balloon I would say just to brief a bit more but uh, well that that was that was very very difficult what I do expect is instead of having 25 years to 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 to, to do this path it, it it's going to be far faster just because of the internet um, international connection between people because I worked for on OpenStack for five, six years. Uh, because of open source, you can mobilize now on a specific project, 500 people. I work with Loïc Dachary on that. You may mobilize uh, 500 people in 
two weeks' time, you may have 500 people around the world working on development of some very specific uh, tools and all of that. So it's just amazing capacity of, uh, uh, I would say, collaborative intelligence as far is far more developed than it was 25 years ago. So that's going to be very, very fast. I would add that we're maybe about uh, almost exactly 20 years uh, delay in between what where we are today and where the internet was. So, in other words, we are in 1997 right now, uh, and then many of you are not uh, would not remember what the internet was in 97 because um, you are younger. But it, it was very early still, and the crash happened in 99. Uh, to 2000. So two points I will say here is that uh, I expect a crash uh, eventually with the, the blockchain. Maybe the ICOs will bring it, uh, possibly. But it's not a bad thing. Uh, I think the crash will be a good thing because it will show that we have pushed the envelope very, very far. And nothing happens, nothing great happens without some craziness of some sort. So the internet had to go crazy and then crash before we then pull back and realized what worked and what did not work. And right now, we don't know really the limits of the blockchain. So I want to see more crazy experiments. I want to see more failures. I want to see more things go up really high. And then we'll know what the boundaries are. And then we'll go back a little bit. And we'll know what to op where to operate. And then it's going to go up again. And the other point is um, I think the experiments are more decentralized uh, because of the nature of the blockchain, it's all about decentralization. And we are starting from a bigger installed base. The internet did not have many uh, users back then, so it took a while to get uh, network effects and to get uh, applications to have millions of users. But the blockchain already has, as a base, three billion internet users. Now the trick is to get some of them to start using blo blockchain applications. And uh, we're in the very early days still. And also what the, uh, the main difference is going to be the, all of the geopolitical political environment because of the interconnection of uh, countries with each other. Just imagine for Xi Jinping currently, it's going to be having the ability to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to block or, you know, uh, just fork some of the <laughs> Bitcoin cryptocurrency and all of that. It's just one way also to conduct a war or to conduct pressure or to get something in exchange and all of that. So you may have a lot of side effects that wasn't existing at the very beginning of the internet with what in the in 1994 we had something like 10 or 12 million internet users in the year 2000 it was only 300 million and in china at that time it was between 5 and 10 i launched alta vista china only for 10 million people so that's that's uh, that's the mindset the mindset has highly changed because of the interconnection of people so very high, I would say, stake from geopolitical standpoint. And at the same time, everyone has, uh, is going to have an uh, individual sovereignty just by doing something which can be, uh, you know, uh, highly distributed. So very mind-blowing. Mind it's a question for both of you, but maybe most, mo mostly for uh, William. Um, you mentioned in your introduction that uh, China, uh, no, China and uh, Asia in general, it becomes the epicenter of um, the innovation in, in the blockchain industry. Even the last Ethereum uh, uh, DEFCON was conducted in Shanghai. Uh, my question is, what, what's really the, is it really a problem? What's the consequence for Europe and North America? Uh, uh, and especially maybe is there uh, some project like Quantum? Is it really a threat to all what has been uh, constructed uh, by all the VC? Uh, in, in all the current existing companies. You, mentioned, you said quantum, right? Yeah. This is a quantum computing... Uh no, 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 Qtum. Oh, Qtum, okay. Because it's from, uh, it's from there. Uh, okay, so there is lots going on in, in Singapore. Uh, there is lots going on in China. And uh, again, I gave the example that my book is being translated. The first few languages were Asian languages, so that's an indication that they are very, very interested, and uh, I know that for a fact. So this is a bit of a backlash because the U.S. is seen as a uncertain environment. A lot of the blockchain companies, especially the ones doing ICOs, they are afraid of the U.S. because the SEC regulations 
are not clear, so they are clear, steering away from them. So it's more of a backlash to the U.S. because the U.S. has been the center of innovation technology-wise. And, and nobody, right now, again, this is another example because this revolution, I don't like to call the world a revolution, but this phenomena is very decentralized. Uh, if you think about, like, the internet started in the, in the U.S., but then it took a long time before we saw it uh, be uh, global. Whereas the blockchain is starting global from day one, almost. There is not one country that has an advantage of any other countries. Even China, yeah, but there are other countries that also are doing some very interesting things. Even here in France, you have some interesting companies like Ledger uh, for the uh, wallet. It's probably one of the best uh, hardware wallets that exists. Another company called um, St Stratum uh, that is doing process, uh, process protocol. Um, I'm encouraged to what's going on in the UK because uh, they are very progressive and the FCA is encouraging uh, a lot of experimentation. They, they do what is called uh, uh, sandboxes. They, they encourage uh, regulatory sandboxes, so they are willing to experiment. Uh, Singapore is an interesting environment, same as Switzerland. So the only two jurisdictions in the world where um, you can be kind of safe, quote unquote safe, are Switzerland and uh, Singapore. But Singapore even a bit better because they made a policy, they made a policy statement that uh, blockchain is okay. Whereas Switzerland, it's kind of a laissez-faire. Some counties uh, are not, are encouraging, but it's happening, it's fine. So, uh, so it, it's a very dis decentralized kind of phenomena, I would say. Um, and uh, in Asia, they are very good at applying things. Maybe they're not inventing it, but they're applying it. And anybody can apply. Yeah, because now the, the activity is going to shift to applications. If you think about the internet, we don't talk anymore about, I, about uh, internet standards and, and internet uh, IPv4 or IPv6. Or it, it's, it's now passe. It's, it's really about applications. And whereas today we are, uh, the blockchain discussions are dominated by technology and, and bits and, and bytes and, and uh, proofs of concepts, proofs of uh, work versus proof of stake and, and uh, uh, you know, very technical terms, uh, uh, this method for this. this is in, in a year or two, we're not going to be talking this vocabulary. We're going to be talking applications and more business language, and, and that's where it's going. And for that, any country uh, has uh, a good position. There's no advantage that any country can ha can has. Uh, it's really about developers. It, it's about creativity, about innovation, and it's back to be becoming a startup and, and creating things. I, I will have a slightly different standpoint, uh, just because of one figure that I discovered, uh, what's, uh, let's say, four months ago. When you look at the number of patent, uh, which has been uh, you know asked and requested in China, uh, it was something like, let's say, three years ago, there were about around 30,000 patents per year. Uh, so kind of uh, balance at par with, uh, with, the, uh, with Europe as a whole or, uh, or the UK. In fact, last year, they just requested one million patents. Okay? Among the one million patents, you've got 8% of them on technology. 12% of them on communications. Uh, I haven't digged in, so just to really understand uh, what's, what, what's all that about. I'm just wondering if at one time or another, China is not gonna play the patent trolling, state patent trolling kind of approach. Just meaning that all of the usage, all of the thinking, all of the technology which has been developed, in open source or whatsoever has been blocked somewhere and you may be requested, you know, because you are doing a specific wallet with a specific code, just requested to uh, come to Shanghai to, uh, to, uh, to, to put an, uh, a caution, uh, in caution of 10, uh, I don't know, 10 million yuan just before, you know, just making your case over there. So I'm just wondering about that. Uh, maybe an opportunity for them also. In uh, just keep in mind that China, it was the uh, Pacific growth for the last ten years. Okay, uh, till last year, it has changed. I, I don't remember the, the word, but the word Pacific growth over the last ten years is meaningful. When you look also at look at China still, uh, look at the word blockchain. 
It's already in the five-year plan since October, last October. So in the five-year plan, there is inter artificial intelligence chatbot. I, I do encourage you just to have a look at that. It's just eye-popping on, wow, they are just thinking that as a new ground, I would say, in terms of exercising their power, power of negotiation or power, military power. Uh, think about the, the whole Spratley uh, stuff. They, they are just, uh, you know, gathering all of the ammunition, a bit like for the uh, terre rare, I don't know the word in English, the, uh, all of the, uh, you know, uh, 97, they, they are mastering moly, molybde, molybdenium, selenium, and all of the tiny uh, pieces of, uh, or uh, metals that you do need for the whole worldwide industry. They are mastering 97% of that. Uh, I'm just wondering about, uh, you know, the evolution and the, uh, the real liberty or freedom they will be uh, able to, I would say the leash they will be able to leave on uh, our back. It's a good consideration to keep uh, track of, but I wouldn't underestimate the power of open source technology. So far on the blockchain specifically, uh, patents don't seem to have a lot of meaning right now, or at least play or power. Although there has been some blockchain uh, patents that have been filed, um, but as a whole, the community uh, is, is anti-patent. Um, and uh, I believe that the open sourceness and the open source innovation is, is going to win over uh, and to continue to be the uh, the modus operandi of of the of the blockchain uh, because it, it is by default yeah. it is a very decentralized technology uh, everything is open sourced or ab almost almost everything is open source everything is about collaborative innovation look at Bitcoin I mean Bitcoin doesn't exist, it, didn't, it wouldn't exist if it wasn't from a, a whole co collaborative number of engineers all over the world. Same thing with Ethereum. Uh, the Ethereum Foundation, their engineers are all over the world uh, and they all contribute. So I, I hope that China does not uh, become a disturbing factor in this regard uh, because the balance is tipping towards openness, open uh, source and uh, the differentiation is going to be in applying it uh, in, the, in the application and in the uh, in the, in how how many users you can get. Uh, so, but very interestingly, the first patent in the energy sector of a blockchain has been done by Allo3, and that's done in the very beginning of April mm -hmm. last year, fifth of April, as I remember, and it was the blockchaining of the uh, all of the heat which is going out of a data center in terms of using it for heat, to, to heat uh, dwellings and, and stuff like that. So here again, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering about uh, an American company giving some, some ideas, I would say, to Chinese companies or Chinese state, just to why, why don't we do the same, you know, with all the technologies that we see. So it's a, but I'm a strong believer in open source, you know, in, in terms. I worked also on a project in, uh, in the cloud area, it's, it's a Ceph, which was a way to reduce, I would say, the volume and the, 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 the place instead of uh, placing all of the, your information in nine different places in, uh, in, uh, in a data center. You may need only 1.7 uh, places in uh, uh, being able. Ceph, as open source, just bring a patent uh, in order to counter all of the attempt of the, of the other to, to, to do the patent. So it was an open source patent which has been given to all of the users. So open source is playing kind of this game too, just to avoid all of the uh, jurisdictions and to le 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 legal fees and all of that that you may encounter because of the weight of, uh, the, uh, of open source. All right, so uh, one last question for uh, the conclusion. Another one. Another question? <laughs> okay, so I think we, we had a consensus. <laughs> Sorry, I actually have two questions, but <laughs> and <laughs> so first one is, uh, what do you think, uh, what are the new kind of job roles uh, that blockchain as a technology would bring in into the market? And second is, uh, do you see any intersection uh, between Internet of Things and blockchain as a technology, and how? What are the new types of what? Of job roles. Job roles. 
it's j j just to give a shot, I will give you one example of work that I'm doing with the uh, lawyer company uh, currently. Uh, we are really wondering if lawyer are going to learn to do some coding, or is that going to be the coders, uh, the developers, which are going to learn, I would say, jurisdictions and whatsoever, you know, just to be able to write proper smart contracts. And just imagine right now we're on very basic with stupid contracts it's, that may evolve with smart contracts, and then you may put some uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence in that, plus many stuff that you <laughs> we don't have idea of currently. Just imagine the, the, the whole difficulties, yes. IoT is going to be uh, pretty challenging just because of the uh, of the number. I'm working currently on 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 the two million IoT uh, project. It's just uh, no far, far far too complicated to to have. So it's very stupid, uh, I would say. So so the word currently is keep it stupid, therefore manageable, uh, because just put smart on that and you may know you you. It's, it's very systemic at one time or another. Very difficult. I mean, one job role is uh, blockchain chief blockchain officer. So, <laughs> same way as uh, back when the internet uh, w started, they were chief internet officer, or, and then add blockchain to any title, and then you have a new job title. So, blockchain software engineer, blockchain software architect, blockchain marketing, and uh, and you name it. Not just not just technical. Jobs, also business jobs, just add the word blockchain, the same way we have internet, whatever. Uh, but yeah, sure, there, there are, and there will be more jobs that are focused on the blockchain. Internet of things, I'd like to see more applications. Maybe one area is maybe microtransactions, because those little things, uh, maybe they charge micro cents or a little, um, just small amounts, and uh, uh, cryptocurrency is very is very good with micro with micro small types of transactions because the transaction fees could be very low. Uh, so there has been mostly proofs of concepts like with uh, I think it was Slocket that demonstrated uh, uh, yeah like a, you, when, when a car that's electric an electric car is stopped at the red light they, they could be charging uh, theoretically uh, wirelessly and then uh, getting paid via uh, a cryptocurrency. In that case, it was Ethereum, or uh, there was another pilot in Brooklyn, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, energy surplus. So if you have more energy that you need, you can sell it to your neighbor, and it, it, a blockchain could be enabling uh, this kind of infrastructure. Uh, but I think the IoT in general has, there has been more headlines, more noise than implementations. Uh, so it's now time to see some real, uh, real implementations. And I'm a strong believer in Africa. Africa has done a tremendous work with Mpensa, for example, in Kenya and all of that, and they are doing a neat work on blockchain currently. And think about the ECFA, which has been launched among uh, 15 uh, in November among 15 uh, African countries, uh, East, uh, Western European con uh, African countries. They are pushing ahead just because of distributed area, because of the lack of infrastructure. A bit like China, you know, who skipped the the uh, the I would say the hardwire and just uh, went uh, straight to uh, smartphones and all of that, I think Africa may be on the rise on that and may take a uh, pretty neat lead on that. All right, thank you guys. We're done for the Q&A.